Hello, this is Dread from Epic Builds. And in today's video topic, we're going to be showcasing the best way to level primals currently, at least in my opinion, is to utilize Maelstrom for any primalist, by the way. Now, if you want to see the full leveling process, like the full VOD that I streamed this on Twitch, uh, it will be in the description as a VOD unlisted on the channel. So you can like look at that and see my entire process. One thing to note, I did have a little bit of difficulties in the ruined era, specifically in the cultist camp, the runes of Wellrune, mainly because I swamped over to Maelstrom a little too early and I did not have my points into beneath the waves. Generally, you're going to want to uh, use swipe and uh, wolf until you get three points in beneath the waves. And that was my mistake. That was my problem. But I, uh, I realized that. Yeah, so for this uh, general uh, play rotation is we're going to wait for Lagan Slumber to come up and use our war cry, Lagan Slumber, war cry. And of course, that's pretty much how we just do normal monoliths, uh, game, like normal uh, gameplay all the way up to uh, monoliths. Now, for the skills here, the first one that we spec into is gonna be Maelstrom. So we take two points travel into turmoil, three points into beneath the wave. This is so that we actually cast Maelstrom four times every single time we cast Maelstrom if we wait a few seconds. This makes it so that Maelstrom costs much less mana for us because instead of doing this all the time, we are just waiting for uh for maelstrom stacks bam now we have a few more it's like unleash if you ever play path of exile and since it kind of our maelstroms for free it helps us sustain mana early on and we kind of just run through the monolith bam run through the monolith bam right now then of course we take four points into whirlpool for stack duration so that we have longer lasting maelstroms so that they stay up on us longer so we deal more damage because the more stacks of maelstroms we have on us the more damage we deal so this is definitely good for us then eventually five out of five points into turbulence for the more percentage damage <coughs> and at that point you'll be in monoliths and then you can either swap to cold dot werebear or you could just play whatever other uh, primalists that you're planning on playing and just respec into it uh then of course for war cry here we take one point travel into Staggering War, one point travel into Kinetic Stream, two points travel into Shredding Howl, then one point into Shadow Breath. This reduces the cooldown to five seconds so that we can spam our War Cry. And then, of course, one point into Juggernaut, the invulnerability is nice. One point into Breath of Aterra, the healing effectiveness is nice. And then four points into Whirlpool, which allows us to cast four Maelstroms at 50% less of the mana cost. So it takes like 28 mana to cast four Maelstroms plus whatever the Warcry costs. And of course that combined with our uh, Lagan Slumber is enough to make our mana situation pretty good in the early game. And we also don't need to worry about standing there and casting as much. We can just simply keep up our Maelstrom stacks and do just as good as before. And of course, eventually we take one point travel into Deep Roar, one point into Jorman's Wrath, and then we'd eventually take five points into Frostclaw for the increased damage. Now, the beauty of this build it is it has a lot of flex slots. So for instance, right now I'm utilizing Spriggan Form and I'm utilizing it for the Thorn Shield nodes because if you don't know, in the passive tree here, this node, Thicket of Thorns, 10% chance to cast a Thorn Shield on you and hit. This is affected by the Sprick and Form nodes. So we get a bunch of flat armor whenever we're hit. We go up from 18% all the way to like 30 to 40% when we get a few Thorn Shields on us. And it's really nice for being able to tank most things uh, early on. Now, you could take this as a flex slot. Like, for instance, if you're like trying to level into Cold Dot Werebear, you would like level into Werebear. If you're trying to play like a uh, Poison Beastmaster, a Serpent, serpent uh, no, aspect of the Viper Crow build, you would swap into Crows here and just let the Crows level. Or if you were playing like Wolves or Squirrels, you'd let Wolves level here. This is like your major flex slot. And then you have another flex slot here. 
which will give you even more uh, flexibility in what you want to uh, turn. Because by this time, you should be respecking into a new build, into what you want to be playing, or play Maelstrom Cold Dot Shaman, which is the build that this is based on. Now, now, for the passive tree here, we have six points to give to Wilderness. We want as much HP as possible. Three points travel into Natural Attunement. Attunement gives our Maelstroms more uh, increased damage. Uh, five points into Hunter's Restoration. We just want as much HP as possible. And then six points into Wisdom of the Wild because we want as much increased damage as possible because uh, Primalist is anemic for uh, increased damage. Then eventually we're going to move into Druid. Take five points to Spirit Warden. This makes it so whenever we use mana, we gain that much as health back. That's part of our sustain, which is really nice because whenever we spam Warcry or Maelstrom, we get a bunch of life back thanks to this node. Very nice node, by the way. Three points travel into Chitness Plating. Then five points to Thicket of Thorns for the all that juicy armor so that when you spec into Spriggan form, you get a bunch of armor. If you do not, if you're not specking into Spriggan form, you're specking into like Werebear or something like that, then you can kind of like move into like Aspect of the Boar in this instead. So you can like ignore these nodes. The two points travel to Blessed Springs so we can get up to Thicket of Thorns. But like I said, if you're not going for Spriggan form, you're using this flex slot for something else, you can just focus into Beastmaster, get some Aspect of the Boar, and get up to uh, the rest of the Aspect of the Boar stuff much quicker. And that's pretty much it for passives, pretty simple. And then, of course, for gearing, uh, Avarice. So Avarice is a quest drop. So let me show you where to get it. So in the first town in the Ruined Era, in, where is it? In the Council Chambers here. Now, over here, there's an old guy sitting in the chair. He will give you a quest to go into Hany, uh, Urza's library. Right. And he will, there will be like a chest you open and then you'll bring it back to Urza. It, there'll be like quest prompts and you bring it back to Urza and he'll give you Avarice. Now, if you accidentally give it to Artem, he will give you a uh, gambler's fallacy, which is not the unique you want. You want Avarice. And the reason why you want Avarice is because it gives you 3% of elemental damage, leeches life and a bunch of leech rate. This means that uh, your damage over time that you're dealing damage with, because uh, Maelstrom is cold damage over time, you'll be leeching that back. And that, on top of everything else you do, will keep you sustained. And if you're playing Cold Dot Wear Bear, uh, it's also really good until you get the Rye Blessing for Spell Leech. So Avarice is a very strong best in slot while leveling until later on. Now, one thing, having a good staff is very important for the build. You want to be upgrading your staff as much as possible, get as much adaptive as possible, and get as much damage over time, spell damage, cold damage, elemental damage over time, just as much as you can humanly get because you want as much damage as you can humanly get with Maelstrom. Uh, you are tanky. You can just sit in front of things and let them die and just leech back and heal back. Um, this is kind of ZDPS, but sadly, that's just every Primalist build while leveling because uh, you don't really get that much damage. And like I said, over here in the Ruins of Wilderness, it's a little sketchy, but you're just going to have to push through it, sadly. It's just how it is on Primalist. And of course, physical resistance everywhere, increased spell damage everywhere you can get, increased physical resistance, increased damage over time, physical resistance, physical resistance, mana regen. Mana regen is nice because you'll be able to sustain Warcry and Maelstrom. I found 12 to be nice, although you could have a little bit more. Movement speed, of course, you want as much movement speed as possible because this build benefits moving around enemies faster. And, you know, of course, even more mana regen, more resistance, the usual. My gear is pretty ass. You could probably upgrade this very quickly. But, yeah, that's pretty much it. what you want for gearing. Uh, for, like, idols, you can get increased spell damage if you have an active totem, stuff like that. Just remember, it snapshots. You want to do this and then apply all your stuff, and then the totem will die. You don't want to apply the totem afterwards because it will not get the benefit because of the way the snapshotting works. But, yeah, that's pretty much it for the build overall. Uh, it's very smooth once you get all of the points in, where is it? It's very smooth once you get all the points in Beneath the Waves. So I was playing Swipe up until I got to this point. Swipe plus uh, Wolf, Summon Wolf with Frenzy. I will be leaving a planner in the description for both this build and plus the thing you use until you get to Beneath the Waves. 
But yeah, that's pretty much it for the build today. With all that being said, thank you all for watching. Have a wonderful rest of the day where you're at, and bye.